I call to order the uh, <laughs> Monday, June 25th, 2008 meeting of the Verona City Council. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next, we'll have the roll. Alderperson Cronin. Present. Alderperson Doyle. Here. Alderperson Gaskell. Here. Alderperson Kemp. Here. Alderperson Cole. Here. Alderperson Riki. Here. Alderperson Touche. Present. Fantastic. Um, next up, we will have public comment. If anyone from the public wishes to speak, now would be the time to do so. I got I got to count off the seven the seven seconds to make sure. Um, all right, uh, minutes from the June eleventh, two thousand eighteen Common Council meeting. Questions, comments, corrections, or motions. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Alder Touche. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alder Cole. Um, any chan Any corrections, comments? Excellent. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion passes. Um, next up, we will uh, go on to mayor's business. Um, item A is the oath of office for our new District 3 Alder person. Um, and the clerk will read the oath if you want to get out of the way. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Charlotte Journey. I, Charlotte Journey. Having been appointed to the office of Alder Person District 3. Having been appointed as op office of Alder Person District 3. Of the City of Verona. Of the City of Verona. I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations you. have you signed your oath <laughs> All right, um, next I'm gonna do uh, an announcement under mayor's business. Um, and uh, a as you all know, um, Alder uh, Doyle has passed in her resignation. She's uh, leaving us and moving to the, the city of Madison. Um, and of course, for such a, a long serving and well-respected member, we do have a plaque. Um, but before I give it to you, um, I just wanted to say a few words. Um, I've had the pleasure to serve with Alder Doyle since 2013. She's someone who's very thoughtful, um, someone who I felt very comfortable uh, bouncing ideas off of and, and trying to figure things out with, someone with an excellent attitude, um, uh, uh, pleasant when, when needed to be pleasant and harsh when someone needs to be harsh, because sometimes, sometimes people gotta be harsh and that's good for the city, um, and, and someone who's helped other people get involved. And I think that's something that all, all local governments, all levels of governments could do with more people getting involved in. So. I would like to thank you for your service and present you with this plaque. If you want to say a few words, you don't have to, but. Sure, um, yeah, I, I feel like I definitely said my piece last time, but it is, um, it is a little sad to be here on my last meeting, um, and I have definitely enjoyed having the opportunity and privilege to serve the city of Verona these last five years. Um, but know that the city is in fantastic hands. We have wonderful staff, uh, wonderful elected officials, and most importantly, we have really thoughtful and engaged residents here who um, 
really are, are great at just letting us know um, what they think will improve city life here and and I hope that I've done all I can to support that throughout my time here with the city but um, looking forward to the next chapter for my family so thank you all it's been a pleasure serving thank you for your service um, next up we will move to item 6b um, citizen committee appointments um, and for this I just have two before you uh, for the library board um, one is for Veronica Kurth who you might be familiar with who applied for the district 3 alder um, and Ricky Conwell um, I would uh, uh, accept motions at this time move approval motion by Alder Gaskell is there a second 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 by Alder Kemp um, all those in favor of approving the appointment say aye aye opposed no and they are approved um, next up we will have item 6c council member committee commission and board appointments um, you saw this in your packet um, this was uh, uh, brought on by Alder Doyle's resignation um, with the new um, current <coughs> Um, with the new position for for human resources I felt like it was Im important to have a full slate of people for the personnel committee um, and there was also going to be a, a, an absence on the finance chair um, and so you, you, you've seen the uh, the shuffling um, and so you know a, a motion or questions or comments would be appropriate at this time Alder Karn um, is there a plan to put the replacement for Liz on finance so there's three yes Alder Riki I'll make a motion to approve the council member committee commission and board appointments motion by Alder Riki is there a second second, second by Alder Cronin any further discussion Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the committee, commission, and board appointment changes, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion passes. Next up, we will have um, item D 6D, um, the presentation by the Greater Madison Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Madison Area Sports Commission. Good evening. Uh, my name is Deb Archer. I had a chance to introduce myself to almost everyone here tonight. Um, I'm the president and CEO of the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Sports Commission. Um, really pleased to be here tonight. Um, we've had a wonderful working relationship with the City of Verona for many years, bo both through all, for all of our work, the Convention and Visitors Bureau side and the Sports Commission side. Um, we are, uh, our names say the geographic area of what we do in terms of serving both the greater Madison area and our Madison area and that is because when visitors come here they don't care about geographic lines they don't care if they're in New Glarus or they're in Cambridge or they're in Madison or they're in Verona they come to this area to enjoy all the things that are here attractions hotels retail uh, restaurants events etc and so we serve the entire area and are very proud to represent all of this wonderfully beautiful robust area we have um, tonight Diane Morgenthaler our executive vice president is going to walk you through a presentation of uh, what we do how we work with you what some of the accomplishments are and some of the also strategies we have going forward to make sure that we continue to push this destination forward in the consumers eyes and to our clients also here tonight is Jamie Patrick our vice president of the sports commission um, uh, the sports side tends to be the more visible side of our work with things like CrossFit and Ironman. Um, the convention side seems to be a little more um, uh, behind the scenes just because t conventions are typically private and not public uh, activities. But anyway, I want to thank you for the relationship and the trust you've had in us for so long. And um, please, as we go through this, I know Diane will entertain your comments and your questions, and um, we want to make sure that you um, leave here tonight having all your questions answered or suggestions you have for us. So thank you. Okay, well, I'm going to jump right in. Um, I wanted to start with a little perspective on tourism as an industry in Dane County. <clears throat> in 2017, tourism uh, generated $1.25 in direct spending from the visitors that joined us. 
what we've learned from research we've done that there are approximately, in any given year, about 16 million visitors to Dane County. All combined, they generate a lot of direct spending, but the total business impact of that when you take into account the trickle-down effect, induced spending, et cetera, is over $2 billion. So tourism is a really important industry in our county. Um, sometimes that's a little bit of a surprise to people, but we are the second largest county in terms of tourism spending in the, in the entire state. <clears throat> when we look at who we are and what we do, we really do a number of things. Our primary mission is to drive economic development through tourism, and we do that by bringing conventions and events here, by servicing conventions and events that are in the community, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, by providing comprehensive information to people who are considering coming here and those who are already here looking for things to do and ways to connect with our community, and by advocating in support of policy and development that further supports the su and sustains a tourism economy for all the dollars and cents reasons that we just pointed out. In addition, the Sports Commission is also committed to giving back to the community and has a, a youth grant program that allows us to engage youth who might otherwise not have access to athletics or healthy, uh, healthy um, lifestyles to engage with our community in that way. So just to uh, pause for a moment to talk about some of the work that we've accomplished in 2017. We secured 153 future events for our communities. Those are conventions, sporting events, all sorts of different types of competitions. And the direct spending that those individual events generated was a, is estimated to be about $65.1 million. We generated over 119,000 room nights with that. So those are overnight stays that drive uh, our room tax collections in our communities as well as sales tax. We secured $1.8 million in contract revenue for our two convention centers here in Dane County, Monona Terrace and the Alliant Energy Center. So very important contributors to the health of those two institutions and venues. And we generated over $10 million in public relations value in national, regional, and local media. So the word gets out whether we're paying for the advertising or not, but um, it helps to spread the word about the greater Madison area. <clears throat> we received some really nice recognition in 2017 and 2018. We were named by MeetingSource.com as one of the top 25 meeting cities. Uh, Wisconsin Meetings named us from their survey of meeting planners, the most helpful CVB in Wisconsin, which we, we love to hear. Our sports events, um, we were named one of the top 50 facilities and venues for sporting events. And our Ironman athletes who have now been coming here for many years, and as you know, um, have quite a lot of activity in Verona, um, named the, uh, us as top 10 in eight categories that they rate on each community and overall we were the number one best city host experience. So I think that speaks to something that we've not only done for a number of years, but how the, all of our communities have really embraced and enlivened the Ironman um, activities and the event itself, brought it to life. And then just recently, our Sports Commission was uh, named Sports Commission of the Year by the National Association of Sports Commissions. So that's a really nice high honor for the work that our Sports Commission is doing. So going back a little bit to the who we are and what we do, I want to talk a little bit about each of those elements of our work. The first is attracting new conventions, sporting events, and competitions. And we do it in a very um, targeted way. Our area is really um, known for a lot of intellectual capital in key research arenas such as agriculture, biotechnology, um, science, and environment. And we're able to, with that reputation that we have as a destination, um, solicit and seek uh, conventions and events that might be in those fields. So that's so something that we really target very specifically. Um, we also look for those international, national, regional events that fit. And by fit, it's that kind of, do they fit our, our intellectual assets? Do they fit our venues and our hotels? Do we have the right, um, are they the right sort of attitude and vibe for what we want to bring into our community? Will our residents feel welcoming to them? And then the other thing that I think people aren't as aware of is that we are the primary convention sales team for Monona Terrace and for the Alliant Energy Center. So our team is really on the ground every day building business for not only those facilities but also all of our hotel facilities in Dane County. So some of the results that you'll see, we've got some really interesting groups coming to town this year. We have the Clydesdale Breeders of the USA 2018 Clydesdale World Show coming this fall. 
This is a really big event that will take place at Alliant Energy Center. We have the Cognitive Science Society, which took us many years to secure, but we're really thrilled that they're coming. They're a very prestigious group. We've got the 2018 Division I Cross Country National Championships taking place out on the Cross Country Course, another group that we're really delighted to have here. And I believe, Jamie, you're there in December, correct? Uh, November. November. So a great time for us to have a big group of people in town filling our hotel rooms. Um, we have a National Space and Missile Materials Symposium and uh, Jim Finity's 2018 Invitational. See, this is just a selection of the groups that we have, but there are many others that will be coming this year that we're really excited about. But I think it gives you an idea of how the target markets we go after are reflected in the groups that are willing and, and want to come to Greater Madison to hold their event. And then, of course, we have CrossFit, which is coming this August 1st to to fifth um, to the Alliant Energy Center. Um, this is probably the largest group that we will entertain this year in terms of direct spending that we have secured. It's still smaller than World Dairy Expo, but we're working on that. Um, but it's a really fantastic event that, that really draws people from all over the world. And they really do show up throughout our community. I hope you have seen some of them. I hope you've had a chance to experience a little bit of CrossFit. This is the second year of a three-year contract with them. So we're very excited about all we can do to really activate the community around us and make them feel welcome wherever they go throughout Dane County. When we talk about servicing groups, the second uh, uh, pillar of our work, uh, we provide service and support to both existing uh, groups and repeat events. And some of the three big ones that we really work with every year are the Epic Users Groups. We do all of their housing reservations for their attendees, which is a, quite a feat for our team to do. Um, we service Ironman Wisconsin, providing volunteer leadership, um, volunteer management, as well as helping them on the, throughout the event itself to make sure that it runs smoothly and that the uh, athletes and the spectators have a great time. And then the other group that we work with on a regular basis, um, on an annual basis, is World Dairy Expo. We have um, a welcome program that we do to welcome all of their visitors into the community. We create specialized visitor information for their cattle exhibitors, like where to get diesel fuel or where to get your truck fixed, or for their international visitors, which often come and stay in the U.S. for an extended period of time for medical procedures or to shop or to just be tourists, so they get a separate set of information. Um, if you see billboards around town welcoming people to World Dairy Expo, we put those up on behalf of that organization in order to welcome their guests to our community. So those are things that we do just to make these existing groups continue to feel welcome in Dane County, in our destination, so that they want to come back and their attendees want to come back each year. From an information perspective, the next piece of work that we do, we have a very robust website, visitmadison.com. We also produce twice a year a visitor's guide that provides information to incoming visitors as well as people in town to find how to connect with our restaurants, our hotels, our attractions, our events. Um, we produce almost 200,000 of these visitor, visitor's guides a year. And um, typically we provide them um, through the mail to people who inquire about things to do. So they're very popular publications. We also have an e-newsletter that goes out to about 16,000 opt-in subscribers, telling them what's coming up in the next month. So those people that are looking for that last minute weekend getaway or, hey, I'm coming to Madison, what can I do, have a place to go to find out what's current and coming up. We're very active in social media for both uh, Visit Madison and for the Sports Commission. And then one last thing that we've done to also bring people in during a, a time when it's a little slow in town um, is we have a hotel week, much like a food week or a restaurant week. This attracts people to come for a lower cost hotel room so they can experience the community uh, in an affordable way. And we found that it's often used for staycations or a mommy's getaway or a girl's weekend. And it runs over kind of that combination of Valentine's Day and a president's weekend. So our hoteliers really enjoy it and we've had great success. Um, bringing some new people to town to, to see the, the community that otherwise might not have come. We also have private partners, and those partners are our hotel partners, restaurants, attractions, um, and many corporations. And we have a partnership engagement program that provides them with information about incoming events, 
provides them with weekly information about who's in town and who's coming to help them with staffing and supply development. Um, we also do a monthly newsletter, and then we have partner events. We have education events, and actually tomorrow evening we have a, an annual event that is the Spirit of Hospitality event. We welcome you all to join us. Um, it's our opportunity to uh, acknowledge and honor uh, our industry and hospitality uh, employees for the work that they do. I mean, we may bring people here, but it's up to those people to make that experience really special. So it's really our chance to say thank you to them, and it's a wonderful celebration. It will be at the Edgewater starting at 4.30 tomorrow, 4.30 to 6.30. We hope you can come. Um, we also are very engaged in sports marketing. Uh, MadisonSports.org is the website for the Sports Commission. And it's this website that will promote upcoming sporting events, whether there are local events that people can participate in or something like CrossFit, because the fittest are coming, they're coming soon. So we're excited about that. And we also were involved this year for the first time in a long time in event creation. So if any of you have heard anything about Bucky on Parade, that is an event that our sports com commission has produced. And we have 84 Buckies. Uh, scattered throughout Dane County. Um, we have activity books and checkoff maps for kids and adults um, so that you can get out and see all the Buckies in their finest glory. It's a public art uh, display at the end of the uh, display, which will be the, in September. A number of the Buckies will go to auction, and the auction will benefit Guarding Against Cancer and the Madison Area Sports Commission. So we're excited about that, and they're really wonderful if you haven't seen all of them. There's one at uh, Wisconsin Brewing, just so you know. It was very popular on Friday night. Um, so to wrap up sort of a, the last piece of who we are and what we do, which is the advocacy and su in support of policy, some of the product development that we've been engaged in is the Alliant Energy Center Master Plan and Destina Destination District Plan. Um, Deb, our CEO, sits on both of those committees and is very actively in involved and has been for a number of years in those conversations. Uh, Jamie facilitated a, a feasibility study for a sports complex between the Ho-Chunk Nation and the city of Madison that would be on Ho-Chunk property out by their casino. Um, so that was a great opportunity for our sports team to come in and bring their expertise to a conversation about a future sports complex that could be here in the, in the destination. We've been very involved over the years in the Judge Doyle Square Convention Hotel Development Project downtown and really work with any hotel developer who comes into the marketplace and has interest in learning about what's happening here in the community so that we can help ensure that the right product is being uh, put in the right place in our community to meet community and um, destination needs. Some other public policy issues we've been involved in is the uh, to get Together Truax, looking at the um, getting the F-35s here in Madison. Very involved with both the Chamber of Commerce, Madison College, the Hotel and Lodging Association, with destination training and talent recruitment. Um, the hospitality industry is not immune to the employment challenges that many employers are finding these days, so uh, working with them to help there. And also working um, in another area of, of regulation and policy around Airbnb and short-term rentals and the impact they're having on, on the hotel business, the impact they're having on neighborhoods and communities, and uh, how to make sure that they're safe places for visitors to, to use when they're traveling. Um, real quick looking ahead, um, we're in an ever-changing landscape. Uh, there's been disruption in a lot of ways, whether it's Uber or Airbnb or HomeAway or whatever is gonna be next. Um, we're constantly looking ahead at how we need to embrace these new um, disruptors because they are what customers are looking for and we need to be sure that we're aware of them and, and are working to make sure they're safe and, and healthy for our visitors. Technology has been one of our biggest challenge. I spend a lot of time in marketing and technology often puts you in the position of somebody else is telling your story instead of you. And so you have to think about how you get your story out there effectively or how you, how you um, modify or manage someone else telling your story. Everyone is seeking experience. That's the buzzword today in terms of, of tourism. People want to do, not just see. And the other piece that's coming up primarily internationally, but we anticipate that at some point it will hit home as well, is a trend called over-tourism, where so many people want to visit a place that it's 
impacting the quality of life of the residents and the ability for the infrastructure of the community to be sustainable. And this is happening in Venice, it's happening in Barcelona, it's happening in Amsterdam. Um, so those are places that we're, we're watching. Right now we're not hearing too much about it here in the States. And then some things, because of all of these uh, trends, um, some of the things that we are looking at and working on are branding and awareness initiatives. We have uh, an awareness campaign that we'll be launching this fall. We wanna really continue to elevate the awareness of the Greater Madison area in the eyes of anyone in the country because a lot of people don't know about us. Um, we also want to make sure their perception of us is a healthy, vibrant perception and not something that puts us in the category of um, a small, kind of quiet, Midwestern communities. We, we are all of that, but we are so much more as a destination. We're working on experience development. We have 10 partners that are working with us and a consultant to develop immersive experiences. And I'm pleased to say Wisconsin Brewing Company is one of those partners working with us to enhance the experience of their tours and the activities that they hold on site so that they'll be able to monetize those, help their business, but also um, create opportunities for people to have a, an immersive experience. Working on collaboration between a variety of organizations on our branding initiatives, we've been working with the Chamber of Commerce in the city of Madison. We've been working with MADREP on bringing site selectors here and on presenting RFPs to site selectors. Um, so we continue to combine resources with those organizations and, and welcome others so that we can kind of raise all boats because we think that's the way to work in, in the economic development arena. We've been working on uh, some destination training so that when you go into a restaurant and you ask the the hostess or the wait staff about what you should do besides eat in their restaurant, they can actually answer that question and they know a little bit about what they're talking about. Amplifying our story is all about telling it and telling it and telling it so that we get ahead of those people that are trying to tell it for us and that it's not no longer our story. And then the other piece, and it's really critical, is engaging with community leaders to define the destination of the future. What do we all want people to come and find here 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what do we wanna be? How do we wanna proceed? And so that's something that we're working on very steadily. So thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, we hope that um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer questions or Jamie or Deb will be happy to answer questions. We have a lot in the pipeline. We're very excited about the health of the tourism industry in Dane County and look forward to working with all of you to continue to make it even better. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, any questions uh, from the council? <laughs> I guess Quiz so. at 10. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. Can I ask a question? Um, the city of Verona has a couple agreements with the, the Greater uh, Madison Chamber of Commerce and the Sports uh, Commission. And how those um, uh, organizations may be changing, um, that action may be coming back to council. Um, so um, we'll have to make some modifications to those agreements. Yes, we're looking at, um, right now we have two separate governing bodies, one for the Sports Commission and one for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And what we've discovered as we move forward, especially as we take on and invest in large groups such as a CrossFit, that we really need the power, financial power of both entities, the organizational strength of both entities to make that happen. So we're looking at the opportunity to combine into one governing body. So our work will continue as it has. We have a strong sports commission, we have a strong CVB, but we want to have one governance body and that will, as we move forward with that, that will impact um, our contracts with, um, Verona, because right now they are separate contracts for the two entities. I so. just want to bring that to everyone's oh, attention that that'll be coming forward, um, I guess, later this year or sometime in the future. Yes, and Jeff and I will be working on that and then bringing that back to the council as we work through those details. But at this point, we're excited about what that brings for the future in strengthening that alignment and alliance between our two organizations. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Thank you again for your time and thank you for your investment in our work. Thank you very much. And thank you.
Um, next, we will move on to item number seven, which is announcements. If anyone has any announcements. Alder Riki. I guess I just want to say goodbye to Liz. I'm just, uh, you did benefit your constituents as you were hoping. <laughs> I'm sure that most everybody would agree with that. And so thank you for your service on the council, but more importantly, thank you for your friendship T to me. I've, I've gotten to know you like outside of council and um, I'm, I'm gonna miss you on council and I'm gonna miss you even more as just getting to see you every other Monday night for sure. <laughs> um, and I'm hoping that this meeting is kind of true to the agenda. It looks like it might be a shorter length meeting <coughs> so that maybe we can go to one of our favorite establishments that closes rather early tonight um, to celebrate your, um, your new life and um, just the fact that you did such a great job on council. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, other announcements? Seeing none, we will move on to the administrator's report. Thank you. I have uh, two, uh, two items. Uh, in the coming months, uh, we've had requests for uh, presentations, and I'm trying to schedule them uh, on the, the second meetings of the months because those are a little bit shorter meetings. Um, uh, the Verona Road uh, Business Coalition will be coming up in July, and then um, the uh, Capital Area Regional Planning Commission will be coming up um, this fall regarding their uh, uh, Madison area vision that they've been working on over the last year. Um, they presented to council last year on the uh, moving forward with that, and I think they're going to uh, initiate a uh, participation uh, project uh, or surveys regarding that. Um, so they'll be coming forward uh, shortly and uh, get uh, city of Verona residents and, and leaders involved in that. Um, so I just want to let you know. Um, the second item is uh, August 14th is the fall primary election. Um, it'll be held uh, starting 7 a.m. Uh, in, in this room. Um, and we also have a council meeting scheduled for the prior night, August 13th. And when that usually occurs, we try to uh, move the, the council meeting because uh, the room has to be set up and, and prepped for the early morning uh, election. Um, so uh, staff is recommending moving the, the council meeting from August 13th, uh, I'm sorry, from August 14th, no, I was right, August 13th to August 16th which would be the Thursday. Does that fit into people's calendar or not fit? I have EMS committee, but I'm sure I can miss that. Okay. Yeah. Other Riki? The 14th is not an election? The 14th is the election day. Okay. Um, and election will go on from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. 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 Alder Gasco? Okay. Uh, planning yeah, commission. Planning commission. Yeah. And we could do it like Friday, but I don't know if <laughs> <laughs> if, if anyone wants to be here on Friday. <laughs> well, I guess pen it. 16th okay great thank you very much that's all I had any questions for the administrator all right next up we'll have the engineers report thank you mr. mayor uh, you have my report with you but as a quick update the contractor is making a big push to try and get the uh, the landscaping and block work done for the new library so they can at least temporarily open up the uh, the main entrance. I know they're using the side entrance right now. Uh, the pavement rehab uh, on East Verona, I believe, went to a traffic shift. The inside lanes are done or being finished, and they're shifting to the outside lanes to do start their removals. The 2018 street rehab, which is Gilman and East Harriet, uh, the contractors removed the 
south and east curbs uh, from Gilman and Harriet and actually has looks like it's prepped and ready for curb and gutter there as well and the old PV bridges the north bridge decks been poured and they're getting ready to tear out the uh, south bridge very soon thank you for that summary questions comments on the engine news report I'll be happy when that library parking lot is done all right, with that, we will go on to committee reports. Uh, 10A, Finance Committee, Alder Doyle. Thank you. Item 10A1, I'll make a motion to pay the bills in the amount of $412,235.75. Motion by Alder Doyle. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Kemp. Alder Doyle. Um, by way of explanation, some of the larger items this go around are to Raymond P. Cattell Incorporated in the amount of nine hundred. $95,000 for street asphaltic rehab. Um, we also paid $72,000 to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for the projects at North Main Street and Old PB. You've heard the explanation. Uh, questions, comments, thoughts on the motion? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion passes. Alder Doyle. Item 10A2, I'll make a motion uh, to, for the extension of contracted auditing services for 2018 from Baker Tilly, Virchow, Kraus. Motion by Alder Doyle. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Cronin. Alder Doyle. This contract ex extension would allow Baker Tilly, Virchow, Kraus to audit the city finances during the city's transition from work horse to BSNA financial software. The transition will be time consuming and difficult. Staff recommends maintaining auditors that are familiar with the city's financial structure during this transition. You've heard the explanation. Questions, comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion passes. Alder Doyle. Next, we have agenda item 10A3. I'll make a motion to award the sale of, let's see here, we switched it to $4,850,000 general obligation corporate purpose bond series 2018A. And that's uh, resolution R-18-036? Yes, that is. Excellent. Motion by Alder Doyle. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Kemp. Alder Doyle. Sure. So this uh, resolution is for awarding the sale of 2018 general obligation bonds totaling $4,850,000 for street improvement projects, including county PD improvements from Woods Road to County M and the Verona Area School District Transportation Improvements Contribution, Water Main Extension on the County M Project, Sanitary Sewer Extension on the County M Project, and Fireman's Park Master Plan Improvements. And the reason for the different amounts for both this agenda item and the next agenda item were interest rates came in lower than projected. Um, you've heard the explanation. Questions, comments on the motion? Question. Alder Suche. I'm, I'm looking at both bonds. I'm just curious why one's a 10 year and the other's a 20 year, that's all. There, I have to turn this on or am I on? You're on. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm Dawn Gunderson, I'm the financial advisor with Ellers. There's typically two reasons why you split between notes and bonds. One is purpose. The state of Wisconsin requires that when you issue bonds, there's only certain items that are authorized to be issued under bonds. And the second, which many times is more importantly, is your financing projects that you want to amortize the debt service order a, a shorter or longer period of time, a lot of times for the useful, useful life of the, the uh, capital project. You know, I'm reading through the, the capital list and I'm having a hard time figuring out what decides goes where and maybe our director can answer or someone I'm just um, sometimes it, it's I know there's you've wrote projects in both places sometimes it's the type of project that's being done but maybe you have a further yeah, answer. Depending on what it is. could you could you come to the sorry 
Are you questioning what's, what, what is being financed in each Well, bond? yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm looking at the A bond versus the B bond and trying to look, I'm just reading through the capital projects and trying to figure out why was one, one group under a 10 year versus the other under a 20 year? The one that's under the B note, that them are notes, the 10 year, the majority of that is the land purchase for the public works building. Okay. Oh, I just see we have the bridge in there. We've got some street improvements. Yeah. You're right. The majority, 2.7 million is the land, but then it's also the Volvo loader and uh, the pond work. I, I don't know. It just seemed it's weird just to me. Like when you have equipment, they expect the life of that equipment to be uh, like 10 years. 10 that years. makes sense. You're not going to put it under a 20 year bond. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is, of course, this is like a lot of money, and it's important that everyone who's going to put their name on approving it uh, understands what we're doing. So this would be a good time for questions. Alder Doyle. Or yeah. uh, just to add, yep, that's been our typical practice is uh, for bonds, we do larger projects, and then for the notes, it's typically equipment and smaller projects and purposes. Further questions, comments? I guess a lot of the reduction in the bond and the note was, it, I mean, it's more from the premium aspect and the underwriter's costs that reduce the bonding and the note to that price. Thank you. Seeing no further questions, comments, or discussion, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Excuse oh. me, Mr. Ray. There has to be a roll call on these. Oh, my apologies. Um, the clerk would like to read the roll. Alder Gaskell? Aye. Alder Kemp? Aye. Alder Cole? Aye. Alder Journey? Aye. Alder Riki? Aye. Alder Touche? Aye. Alder Cronin? Aye. Alder Doyle? Aye. And that motion passes. Um, next, we'll uh, still with the Finance Committee, Alder Doyle. For agenda item 10A4, I'll make a motion uh, to pass resolution number R-18-037, authorizing the issuance and sale of $4,700,000 in general obligation promissory notes, series 2018B. Motion by Alder Doyle. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Cronin. Alder Doyle. The resolution for awarding the sale of 2018 general obligation notes totaling $4,700,000 for projects including the replacement of the old PV bridge and associated road work for the project, street and utility improvements at Legion Street and West Verona Avenue within TID No. 9, purchase of the property for a new public works facility, the restoration of the Southwest Stormwater Retention Pond at Silent Street, and the purchase of a new wheel loader. Thank you for the explanation. Questions, comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution R-18, or my apologies, we'll do the roll call vote. Alder Camp? Aye. Alder Cole? Aye. Alder Riki? Aye. Alder Touche? Aye. Alder Cronin? Aye. Alder Doyle? Aye. Alder Gaskell? Aye. Alder Journey? Aye. And that motion passes. Uh, anything further from finance, Alder Doyle? Um, nope, nothing further. Thank you very much. Next up, we will have um, Public Safety and Welfare Committee. Um, my understanding is that Alder Touche will handle this one? Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. We just have one item today. Uh, it's purely for discussion. No motion on this. Um, uh, to discuss the uh, possibility of um, doing an amendment to our section 10-1-26D, which is a uh, parking restricted uh, truck loading zone uh, in our court of code of ordinances. This is for along West Park Lane, immediately south of the former World of Variety, located at 118 South Main Street. At this time, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Holt to uh, explain what what uh, the um, the owner of the property is asking us to do and um, and what it means to the city. Thank okay. you. Uh, staff has received a request from Dollar Tree to create a truck loading zone on Park Lane adjacent to 118 South Main Street. The Dollar Tree is planning to occupy part of the former World of Variety. 
a building, but their lease is contingent upon obtaining approval to park and unload a truck for four hours on West Park Lane. The loading area would be on the north side of West Park Lane and would be used between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. as provided in the staff memo. If the city chooses to accommodate the request, an amendment to section 10-1-26D, parking restricted truck loading zone times is required to create a truck loading zone in this area. As Mr. Touche said, there is no action of the request, but staff is requesting direction from the Common Council. There is also the applicant and the audience if there are other questions that I cannot answer. Uh, Alder Touche and then Alder Gaskell. Thank you. I'd like to add um, at committee level, we did ask the applicants, you know, the rationale behind it. We heard from um, um, Mr. Sayer about. Uh, you know the conditions out there and actually took the the pleasure to drive past it I, for a second time after this weekend I'd been there once before just um, you know talked about the loading dock you know he did kind of acknowledge that it seemed like there was a loading dock before or some loading area but felt um, that it must have been used in like a less than an hour increment because it is not a loading zone but if if a vehicle came in to unload um, it, it probably came and went within an hour um, in addition, he also mentioned some bollards that were on the sidewalk. When I looked at where the bollards were, it really looked like it was to protect the building from trucks pulling out of the Miller's loading area. Um, so it seemed more like a precaution to protect the building, less so that this is a loading area, even though the curb is painted yellow. Um, and I can see how if there is a vehicle on that side of the road that it would be rather difficult for trucks to um, unload across the street. Um, in addition to that, um, the applicant had asked for maybe asking for a, a single day for a, time, a loading zone time instead of you know five days a week in the morning just on a particular day of the week. Um, he had mentioned the number of items that uh, they that the, a store typically turns over, and it's quite a few if each one goes for a dollar. Um, so it, he you know he acknowledged that it's probably a good four hour load versus a one hour load. Um, I'm just trying to recall if there's anything else that was brought up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I want to represent you as fairly as I can. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's all I have to add. Alder Gaskell. Um, I have a couple questions, please. When World of Variety was operational in the entire space, what was their loading zone procedure? Do you know? They do have a door on the side on West Park Lane and from what I've understood, they have parked there, but typically it's only about an hour time frame okay. for most people who are doing deliveries. And then it's the lease being contingent upon obtaining approval. Is that coming directly from the landlord saying, unless you get your four hour loading zone, we will not give you a lease? I'll let the applicant answer that one. If the applicant would like to come up to the microphone, if you could. The owner of the building who owned the World of Variety is this gentleman right here. So if you wanted to maybe some history, he'd be the guy. Um, but to answer the question about whether or not we would could lease the space without the ability to have a truck, we, we couldn't. Um, I, in fact, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm the real estate guy, but our operations people oversee that aspect of things. Um, in fact, when we were at dinner, I called her. Um, she said it's probably closer to three hours, but maybe in the winter when we're getting more freight, then four hours is probably more realistic. And I also ask if it's possible to maybe stipulate a Saturday when there would be less traffic. She said we could do that. So if that made more sense so where there's less going on in and around the community. I know it's a really busy area down there. By the way, I love your community. I'm, it reminds me of Fishers, Indiana, which is, I'm from Indiana, um, which is a compliment. Um, but it's really busy down in that area, and I get that. Um, it seems like maybe a Saturday if would minimize things, but we think we do well here, and, and um, I th think we'd be well received by the community, but we do need that, that amount of time. Otherwise, it's, it's probably no go for us. But 
I'll let you guys uh, make that determination. Thank you, um, Alder Cole. Um, I had asked Mr. Sayer earlier um, about uh, if the ordinance would have to be, if they could narrow it down to a time or a day or um, if it would be kind of a permanent four hour thing uh, ordinance. And he said that they could narrow it down to a time zone um, like in the morning, but they couldn't narrow it to a specific day. So my concern was just, we'd be making this a permanent four hour loading zone. Um, even if it was narrowed down to a specific time, that's pretty busy time. And if it's every day for our loading zone uh, for future use, even a, a my concern was that it would create issues for the future. Can I, <laughs> can I address that? Um, no, my apologies. Um, any other comments? Um, Alder Journey. So um, I'm, Miller's hours start at 6.30 in the morning and go till nine o'clock at night. Also, I've noticed that um, there's it's, um, that space is also used for parking on the south side of that street during the day. Um, <clears throat> would there be consideration for flexing your hours, i.e. doing them say between three o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the morning and uh, doing nighttime hours? I don't think we could get staffing um, at those kind of hours. I could ask the question, I don't think so, but would, you know, the day part, the six to 11 is what um, I suggested. I'm open to any day part, but the three o'clock in the morning is probably not gonna, it's not, probably not gonna work. Um, but to, to your comment about the, uh, the every day, the four hour every day, what about maybe like a Saturday only thing I, I would I say Saturdays are probably the worst day to do that. Is it? So I mean, I every time I leave Miller's parking lot, that's the way I go okay. home. So it's honestly the only way I'd see this working is if for some reason we decided to make that portion of the street one way. And then we would not ever be blocking an actual travel lane, but that would cause all sorts of other problems. I would say that would, that would cause problems with Miller's in general. It's like if there's a semi park there for an exorbitant amount of time i mean getting their trucks in and out of there too i could just see that being an issue regardless of the day one day a week questions comments from the council i guess i'd like to hear how world of variety did it uh, is that possible please yeah okay no thanks no i'm the person that made the deliveries for world of variety and we would bring our truck to the building. Uh, we don't have a semi truck, we had a 26 foot box truck and we would pull up in the exact same spot that he's referring to and um, unload whatever merchandise that it was that we needed. Um, again, I would say it was probably typically an hour or less. Um, occasionally, um, if we were in the store with the staff, um, well, when, when you're parked in that spot, um, there is sufficient room for semi-trucks to back up into Miller's loading docks. Um, in our case, we just weren't there for that long. And like you said, he, he's asking for four hours, one day a week. And to answer your other question, um, it's not a matter of we won't lease to Dollar Tree if they can't get that. It's Dollar Tree will not lease from me. Okay. So. Personally, it's restricting my ability to market this building. Um, so on a personal note, that's very important to me. So if it's one day a week for four hours, that's for one tenant in half the building and you're leasing out the other half is what I'm understanding, right? So that might be another whole loading zone issue? Well, that wouldn't be because uh, the building would be split down the middle. Dollar Tree would have that side of it as you look at it um, any other tenant would have to not have access to that loading zone they would have to bring in anything from the front door or there is a side door over there on the bank it, there it wouldn't make sense to have somebody on that other side with semi trailers because they wouldn't have a loading zone access like Dollar Tree's asking for and it's more two thirds one Uh, can I get your name, sir, for the minutes? I'm sorry, Mike Mudler, M-U-D-L-E-R. Thank you. Um, Alder Chiché? 
Neil, so this is a discussion item and, and just thinking about what you've done for World of Variety and just what I'd say that area is kind of used to, I would, I would definitely support a one hour loading zone time. Uh, I think the four hours um, a stretch and I, I, it doesn't make me comfortable right now. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, other comments? Uh, Alder Kemp? Yes, if I could. Is the four hour, is that just, is, is the reason why you're asking for that amount of time just because of the amount of stock that you need that to bring in? It is. Um, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, basically, we have multiple boxes that will be uh, loaded into the back of the stock room. We, a Dollar Tree, you guys have probably shopped there, I don't know, but um, we sell things for a dollar. We do about twenty, thirty thousand dollars a week in sales. Um, so that's twenty, thirty thousand dollars of one dollar items that we turn over weekly. That's a lot of boxes, and we do that in one visit um, to our stores, so that it takes time. Thank you. Uh, Alder Gasco. Where is Dorn loading right now? Uh, no. Dorn's trucks pull in from the front. front of their building and they back in and they have a, a loading um, door as well, a roll-up door that faces the front, the front of, the of building their building. building. Okay. Correct. Although I, I must admit, I did see one parked on the back side the other day when I was driving by looking at pictures too <laughs> for Dorn. Other discussion points? Alder Jerry? So I mentioned um, early morning hours. What about later in the evening hours when there's less traffic? Um, the answer, I asked that question. Um, the answer I was given is they, trucks can get there as late as five o'clock in the evening, um, but not past five o'clock. So they won't show up at seven, eight, nine o'clock in the evening. 5 p.m. would be the latest that they could show up and still logistically carry on as they as they do. All right. Um, I'm going to say something myself here. I, I would like to point out that, you know, staff has reviewed uh, from the memorandum. Staff has reviewed the request and does not support the ordinance amendment um, as a four-hour time period. Um, I, I would hope that people could give staff some guidance as whether the council agrees with that. I, I, we heard from Alder Touche um, or disagrees with it. Um, just to, to, so staff knows what to do coming from this meeting. Alder Kemp. Yeah, I, I have to say I'm a, a little bit concerned about the length of time. Um, I, that area does tend to get pretty congested. So, you know, to have a truck there up to potentially four hours is, is something that I, I couldn't support at this time. Thank you. Um, other comments? Alder Cronin. My concern is also the, the length of time. Um, the fact that Miller's parking lot, ex there's one exit from Miller's parking lot that's directly across from there. Um, it's well utilized. I mean, I know there are three other, yeah, three other exits from their parking lot, um, but we have to consider the public safety of people who are coming to the grocery store as well. Well, the Miller's, Miller's parking lot what, how I'm envisioning the truck would be, I, I don't think the parking lot would feed out right there where a truck would be. It isn't, but I'm sure there's sight line concerns if you're turning left. I, I would also like to note that this isn't the time for public comment, to my apologies, but it's, it's, it's not a back and forth. Um, so other comments? Uh, Alder Cole and then Alder Journey. Oh, sorry, Alder Journey. No, I would just like to point out that um, hometown pharmacy, that's the major exit area for hometown pharmacy. Um, would anyone else like to give direction for or against to staff? I may be misinterpreting the packet picture, but it almost, I mean, the picture that's in the packet showing the yellow line. I, I did that. It appears to me that we have trucks that are already parked on the sidewalk on the Miller side. Is that, does anyone else see that? That is correct. <laughs> okay, so right there we have an issue in that we've already, with the trucks that exist there, we've already got people blocking pedestrian access with their parking. 
I will say that I used to cut through here on my bike or walking because it's a good way to cut off the more um, heavily motorized corners there to get back up to the neighborhood there. So my concern would be even if we did this, how do we enforce it so that people are not pulling up on the sidewalks or outside of your four hours? You know, do we even have staff that would be able to get out there and enforce it anyway? Um, it's, a, it's a tough situation. I mean, it's congested down there, so but maybe w there's something we can still work, but I don't think the four hour chunk, unless it's, as Alder Journey suggested, sort of off hours is really gonna work. Other comments from the council? Alder Riki? I guess I should just say that, it, like I like the idea of the truck only coming once a week. It seems like a less, um, impactful environmental impact um, so I appreciate that I just um, worry that if the ordinance can't apply to one specific day of the week that that would open up a big can of worms for the city and just um, create potential conflict with the neighboring businesses and things like that so um, I, I'm just trying to think of if there's some sort of compromise that can be made with um, like Alder Journey mentioned about the um, the different hours that wouldn't um, be during busy times and things like that, but the way it's stated now, um, I don't think I can support it. And six to eleven is five hours, not four hours. So I just that's a busy window. Wondered if we could. Okay. Anyone else? Come. Got comments? Questions? <laughs> Um, I, I don't think we're due for a presentation. So should I drop mic and leave? <laughs> um, all right. Well, <laughs> could, is there like a secret no. button or? All right, we're gonna, I guess, take a minute, a minute recess. Uh, and he's working on it. He's, oh, he's working on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like you guys are talking too much. Like when they're <laughs> 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 all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Um, it, it would nice if the projector light was off too um. <laughs> it's, it's kind of it's kind of right um, anyway I guess uh, <laughs> comments questions on the uh, uh, the amendment to the ordinances this halt do you have what you need do you think yes I do <laughs> All right, seeing no further discussion, we'll move on to new business. Um, is okay. All right, okay. Um, move on to uh, item 11, new business. Uh, discussion of impossible action regarding the process for filling the district one alder person vacancy. Uh, Jeff? Thank you, I included uh, the, the proposed uh, information that we'd be sending out regarding the the, the vacant position um, with uh, uh, potential dates um, and, and that as I was looking at it uh, trying to uh, come up with a, a time frame like we did for the last uh, round of applicants uh, we'd receive applications um, no later than noon Thursday July 19th uh, the July 23rd meeting, uh, someone, the last time we had, uh, they'd make presentations for council and then August 13th, uh, which would be actually the 16th since we discussed that, um, the uh, council would make the recommendations for, for appointment. Um, this was uh, the proposed, um, proposed dates. Um, if you're wanting to extend it out, um, to have uh, more time um, or if this works with everybody's uh, uh, time frame um, just wanted to get some feedback on that and then also the, the questions if um, 
if there were any additional questions or if council wanted to uh, change uh, the questions uh, since they were already presented to everyone in the city uh, for responses. Um, I'd like to hear some feedback on that. Uh, Alder Gaskell. Uh, I assume we should do this the exact same way we did it, and so I wouldn't recommend changing the questions. My, I do have a technical question. If I'm not in attendance on the 16th, can I not vote then? Um, so push it back, maybe one meeting. I don't. I just don't think we should do it on an alternate date. When I put this together, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's w fair. Wasn't identified. Um, so that would be uh, the second meeting in August. So that would be the third week, uh, the 21st. 21st? No. 27th? 20th? 27th? 27th, yes. No, oh, I'm sorry, yes, that's correct, 27th. So if, if everyone's comfortable with that, I can start sending that information out, um, providing um, it in all all uh, medias uh, to get people to start uh, responding to. Does that work for people? Yeah, it's the last week before school. Those oh, kids. Yeah, good. yeah sorry. <laughs> How depressing, right? Um, that's the only thing I can think of is just if you're traveling with family, but I think I'll be here. I'm not moving anyone into college yet. That year. Other other thoughts? Um, I expect we'll use the same voting method. There are um, some online calculators, which I think might make it easier. Um, if people are still wanting- oh, You should just do it, Luke. You should just do it. <laughs> All the Ricky? Just use sticky notes like in the video. Just sticky notes like in the yeah, video? Yeah, I think that would help. It makes for a better photo in the paper anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we'd be running into uh, transparency issues if we just received something out of a computer program without going through the, the process, uh, making it visible for uh, residents. No, that's a good point. Use a computer to validate what you did. Sticky notes. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, if if. Hope a lot of people apply. I, I just want to say this is our first full meeting. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I've all and, and now we're gonna have to wait till September. So um, thank you for being here. And <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure. <laughs> I guess yeah. So pick the meetings you're gonna be absent on carefully. Um, with that, we will move on to new business uh, uh, 11B, which is the approval of the operator license. Is move approval. Going straight for it. I read them. We, we got we got we got to announce them. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to your point, uh, I was going to ask if, because it is a long list, if we could um, just approve them as presented in the council <laughs> packet. <laughs> uh, motion, motion by Alder Touche. Second. Second by Alder Riki. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the operator license, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Um, and they are approved. And with that, we are on to item 12. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Motion by Alder Touche to adjourn. Is Second. Seconded by Alder Gaskell. All those in favor of adjourning? Oh, I'm so, someone over there. Um, Alder Cole. Um, all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>